All right, hello everybody. This is going to be a tutorial on how to use your Synology NAS as a VPN server. So if you're watching this video, you've likely seen hundreds of ads by VPN companies telling you that if you're ever connecting to a Wi-Fi network you do not own, you need to be using a VPN. For the most part, these are scare tactics and VPNs can only really help you in the event of a man in the middle of attack. I'm not going to go into it in detail here, but a man in the middle of attack is basically when you have somebody set up a fake Wi-Fi network and then use that network to basically take any data that you have going through the connection. To combat that, most if not all websites at this point have HTTPS encryption. That's that little lock in the upper left hand corner of your bar that says this is a secure connection, which in a lot of ways does the exact same thing that a VPN does. As the router cannot see anything other than the incoming IP address, so you, they'll know what website you went to, but they could not tell what any pages you went to. They would only be represented as encrypted jargon. However, if you would like to have a VPN, you can use your Synology NAS to host one from your own home. And by hosting your own, rather than paying a monthly service fee, you can actually get a lot more features out of it as well. So VPNs work by basically taking a tunnel connection that goes from wherever you are in the world and goes directly first to your home network using encryption. To any computer you're using, it will appear as though you are operating from within your own network. You will get slightly slower times and it can take up a lot of CPU on a Synology, but it allows you to operate within your own network from wherever you are in the world. This can do things from allowing you to SSH into any machine on your network without exposing ports to the internet, to watching the Netflix available in your home country when you're traveling internationally. Another great way to do it is to use an rsync to actively back up portions of your NAS using a very cheap Raspberry Pi and a hard drive. This allows for another step in securing your data. Something like a hardware raid where you can lose one disk and still have all your data is good in the event of a mechanical failure, but can't help you if your house burns down, there's an earthquake, a flood, or even you get a ransomware attack. So for really critical data, I would recommend getting a cheap Raspberry Pi with a hard drive and hooking it up at a friend's house, then using a VPN to connect back to your network. Then every night, take those photos you cannot possibly lose or your medical records and run an rsync command with them. rsync is a great way of syncing two folders together while using very little data. It basically only updates the differences, so that way you're not transferring 300 gigabytes over the network every single night if you only made 10 gigabytes of changes. It also can be set up so that it does not delete files on the client side. This means if you accidentally delete something on your NAS and need to recover it, you can just go back to that Raspberry Pi hard drive and grab it off there because it was never deleted when you deleted it on your NAS. I'm planning on doing a tutorial on how to do this in the future, so subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on it. So now onto the actual tutorial part. First, we're gonna go into DSM and we're going to download a package called VPN Surfer. So go to Package Center and just search VPN. And it's right here, VPN Surfer. And we're go, gonna go ahead and install it. it has... All right, so now that it's installed, we're gonna go ahead and open it. So it's a very simple app. The first page shows you the status of the different VPNs. You can see who's connected, logs, settings, and the privileges, which users are allowed to connect to the VPN. And then down here, we've got set up a VPN server, and there are three different types listed. If you don't know a lot, I would recommend just choosing L2P slash IPsec. This is the one with the most compatibility with the least setup required. All you need is your username and your password. So we're gonna go ahead and enable that. So it's gonna ask us to specify the dynamic IP address, the DNS server. These are gonna be the IP addresses your Synology uses when it's acting as a router. So for me, 
My primary router has the subnet 192.168.1.1. So I'm going to keep that the same, except I'm going to do 192.168.2. This is just to keep all the IP addresses similar. You can choose realistically whatever, and your Synology will handle the rest. Although when choosing the full subnet, I would choose the prefix 192 or 10, because those are IP addresses that are never assigned, and so you can guarantee that those are going to be unused. The only thing that could be using them are stuff behind your router's firewall. And then I would also make sure not to have it identical to your router subnet, because you don't want them both assigning the same IP address to something. The next choice we have is the max maximum connections. So you can set this to anything you would like. However, there is a catch. Anytime that somebody is connected to this, all their traffic is going to be going through your home network and is going to have to be encrypted and decrypted by your Synology NAS. That can put a lot of CPU strain so you might not want to connect a ton of devices together, especially if they're going to be passing a lot of data at the same time. So then we're going to want to make sure the authentication stays as MS chap. Otherwise, your passwords are not encrypted and decrypted when you're connecting. And so it's a really easy way for somebody to break into your network. Then this is the maximum transition unit. I would just leave that as default unless you have a very specific router setup. And finally, the important part is the authentication key. This is going to be what you use to get back to your Synology. I would make sure that this is a very secure password. If you have to have SHA2 compatibility, you can enable this. It does decrease the security of your passwords. All right. And so now it's instructed us to open up specific ports on a router. These are going to be the ports that the VPN uses to connect back. Synology has made port using incredibly easy. So we're just going to go into control panel, external access, router configuration, and set up our router. It's going to automatically detect what router we're using and for the vast majority of routers, it will automatically be able to open up these ports for us. So now our Synology knows our router, and so we're going to create some additional connections. So what we need to do is we need to use the VPN server addresses, and they're listed out here. We're going to go ahead and open up the ports so that we can connect via VPN. All right, so now it's just going through and opening up those ports on our router. And we can see all of them passed the test. And so now, just like that, we should be able to connect back to our home network using our Synology as a VPN server. So now let's go ahead and on our Mac, I'm going to go ahead and connect to us. So simply go into settings, network, and create a new one. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new VPN. Under the type, we're going to do L2TP because that's what we set it up and just hit create. So now it's gonna need our server address. This is the IP address of our home network. Most people do not have static IP addresses. That means that whoever provides your internet access may randomly give you a different IP address because a new one opens up or there's tons of reasons why they do. I think personally, they do it randomly every once in a while to force people to buy a static IP address who need it. Synology has made this really easy to get around though because since your Synology always knows what its IP address is, it allows your Synology to act as a DDNS server. And Synology's even provided free domain names for this. So we're gonna go back into control panel and click external access, and we're going to create a new DDNS. I've already got this set up. 
but it's incredibly easy. All you have to do is click add, choose Synology, host name and username, and you're good to go. All right, so now instead of having to type in our external IP address every time and not being able to connect to our VPN if our router's IP address changes, we can always just use this host name, spacerex.synology.me, no matter where we are in the world. So now we're going to go ahead and just use that. And we're going to connect, connect using my own username and password. And under authentication, we, there's two different authentications. There's first your password. And the machine authentication. And just go ahead and click connect. And just like that, we are connected. I will say I did have one issue. I forgot I had to disable run in kernel mode. But once I cleared that up, everything worked perfectly. So right now the connection we have is acting as an extension of our network. It's only going to be sending packets through the VPN if it's trying to connect to something that's in the external network. But if we want to send all traffic through to get the security of knowing that there's no man in the middle attack possible, we have to go into advanced and click send all traffic over VPN connection. I will tell you this, it can really slow down, especially if you've got a lot of people connecting because now not only are you downloading everything, but you're also uploading everyone's traffic. So you've got 10 megabytes down, but only two megabytes up. Then anyone connecting to that VPN at best is only going to be able to share the two megabytes because they are being uploaded as well as downloaded at the same time. But if this is something you need to do, it's a really helpful thing to have. And it's much more secure than exposing ports on your network. All right, well, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. Bye.